welcome friends to Tanked Up, the podcast all about video games and beer. I'm one of your hosts, Ben. It's episode 388 and I'm here with Adol. Hey! And Lucy. Ooh, your audio, literally, we're just talking about microphones and audio. Your audio cut out instantly. <laughs> like, like neither of us heard you say hello. <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, God, got the switch up. There we go. There we go. Yes. Oh, a good start. Hello. Hello. Hello, yeah. mate. Now, now my mic is looking better. Anyway, okay. get into the show. The microphone just had a bit I... of starting nerves or something and just yeah. wasn't quite ready. I've yeah, got fair. the jitters. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> good. Let's open some beers. As we do in each and every week. Uh, Adol, oh, shit. what are you uh, starting off with this week? Yeah, it depends. Lizzie, are you having one or two? We'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, well, just because, like last week, you guys mocked me for the order I had my two beers in. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'll just make the decision now. Um, I'll have I'll, what I'm going to start with, slash maybe stay with, is the Warsaw Dream Polish Nipa from Funky Nipa. Fluid and Warsaw Festival Piwa. Nice. Uh, so it is a collab Warsaw Beer Festival special, top Polish breweries twice a year, one of the best beer events in Europe. Uh, and it's, uh, so it's, I believe Funky Fluid and WFP are both Polish breweries, but it's a collab. Intense aromatic New England IPA hopped using only Polish hop varieties. Brewed mm. together with the Warsaw Beer Festival. Come to the festival and rate the beer in the untapped app. And there's a little untapped QR code. Oh, interesting. Convenient. Yeah, mm. so that was one of the reasons why I had to grab this tin when I saw it in the store. It was like, interesting, a like untapped branded beer festival if i really like this i don't know if you'll be able to get it folks as well <laughs> sure yeah yeah um but it's um it was imported to the uk by james clay's and sons and brig house oh, good um and it's pale unfiltered pasteurized it doesn't it just says water ball barley malt wheat malt oat flakes oat malt hops and yeast so i don't know what the 6.4 percent polish nipa is which I think is a little weird, given that it's like bragging about using Polish hops. Mm. Bragging, but like commenting on Like a selling point, uh, you know. Yeah, and it's got a three out of five on their bitterness scale. Okay. Tiny so anyway, thing. I don't, yeah. I have no idea what to expect. Fair. Because there's Fair. so little flavor text, but I was like, beer festival beer, neat. I could actually have checked untapped, I suppose, and see what people thought, but... Let's just find out together. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Lucy, I see you moving a can around. What are you? What are you drinking? Yes, I've got a beer from Adwa Theory <gasps> in Virginia, Ooh. USA, um, and it's called Maiden of Pain, which is uh, a seven point five percent. Where did I see the style? Where was it, Ian? There's a lot of flavor. Well, not flavor. To it. There's a lot of writing on it. And it's just like some weird metal. Kind <laughs> that, of that sounds right. Like Three, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, where? Oh, it's a rye India pale ale. Oh, rye, nice. Yeah, that's why I picked it up. Um, this was, I think it was a few months ago. I think I just forgot I had it. Um, but yeah. This was apparently canned in July. Okay. I think I got it maybe a month or two after. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's been sitting about a bit, but hopefully it's still good. Was that because you had a bit of a, not a flurry necessarily of American beers, mm -hmm. but the, there was somewhere local to you that, that just happened mm -hmm. to get a bunch of American breweries in, right? Yeah, left. Uh, I was going to say left handed. Beer, but, uh, that's a brewery. Yeah, <laughs> left field beer in Birmingham. They do a lot of. Uh, they import a lot, basically. Nice. Okay. Um, from Europe, USA, USA probably a bit more now than Europe mm -hmm. because bureaucracy, um, sure. mm. and Brexit. So, but yeah, they get a lot of American beers. Nice, nice. Ooh, it's very rye. It's very red. That's ruby. Yeah, it's probably a bit more orange where okay. I am. The light is probably making it a bit more red, but yes, mm. it is. Yeah, it's, nice. it, it's a deep amber. 
we'll return to it momentarily. Um, I think I'm almost completing the trifecta of IPAs. I've got a West Coast IPA uh, this evening. Um, and I'm drinking White Oak from Polly's. Um, I haven't had a Polly's beer for a while. Um, this one you can't see because of my light. It's basically a white can with a little bit of a a little bit of a grain to it. Not not quite um, timber, but it, you could almost take it for a piece of painted timber, being called white oak, um, as Polly's do. There is almost no information uh, on the can itself. It is six point nine percent. This is part of the augment range. White Oak, West Coast IPA, brewed in mould in North Wales. And the only things I know are that it's got water, gluten, malted barley, oats, wheat, hops, and yeast in it. Um, best before, like, summer next year. So I don't know when this was brewed, but it's got a good amount of time uh, yeah. on it. Um, it does tell me on the front, however, that it's got Citra, Comet, and Idaho 7 in it as well. Mm. I think I must have noticed that before to pick it up, but I've only just noticed it now to say. Um, <laughs> so a little bit more info, which is nice uh, from Polly's. I will crack this open and we'll roll back round to the funky fluid. Funky fluid. Funky fluid. Um, so I pour it with the head, but... Nice. <laughs> yeah, not a, I just assume it's a translation problem. <laughs> uh, was it? I can't. Remember, was it? La, it might not have been last year. It might have been the year before. They always do a. Uh, well, I say always. They have previously done sort of wintery kind of beers, haven't they? I know Lucy. You, but I think both you and I have had Funky Fluid and like Malt Garden or someone like that, mm. um, like collaboration beers around this time of year. Well, I don't know why Funky Fluid seem to appear yeah. around the winter much more than we like ever have had them. <laughs> Kind of at any other time, yeah. um, but a yes. A lot of those uh, Eastern European uh, breweries, especially for stouts, mm. often bring out a big one like mm. towards the end of the year that's been aged. Yes. And, uh, mm. Nice. Interesting. So it, it, it's quite aromatic. Um, a little sweet, almost a bit of honey, on a peak of a slight heart. Mm, what is that? It's a beer. A bird. Some it's kind a of funky <laughs> fluid. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Mm. Did it dunk the funk? No. <laughs> no. It's got a nice pineyness to it. Really good bitter aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It starts tasting a bit wet. Um, and then in the mid and finish, it gets feels it feels more viscous. I think that's just the mm. the fact that the initial taste is a little light, and then you get sort of a deluge of the flavors. Um, very light citrus note. Um, I said a light, a nice, good, rich, piney bitterness uh, lingers. Um. It finishes a bit, uh, like, you, texturally, it's lingering in my mouth, but there's so much bitter um, like coming from the hops that I'm feeling like I want to quench my thirst, even though I feel liquid still in my mouth, mm, if that makes sense. Mm. It's quite um, hop-forward. Okay. It's really tasty. It's just not going to last long at all because of this, like, slightly drying feeling of a finish and the person drinking it having, you know, mild alcoholism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was the percentage? Seven point something. 6.4. Oh, okay, lot. right, okay. You know what, I'm actually, given that they bragged about it on Untapped, I'm just going to Warsaw have Dream. A have a look. I'm have a look. I'd, I'd say that's crushable strength. Some oh, people yeah. may say it's around the fours or even the fives. I'd go anywhere up to nine. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Just nailing, I mean, nailing eight point seven percent. It has nothing to do with the ABV. 
right? No, sometimes it's like the body if it's like yeah, true, know, not too true. heavy. And, yep. Yeah, absolutely. That's I think I, I, I think I though, everyone you know uh, higher percentage beers do start to command a bit more of a viscous, a bit more of a bigger kind of body mm-hmm. on a lot of them, mm-hmm. and with with those higher percentages, you get that little bit more kind of sweetness, which stops yeah. it being maybe a little bit chuggable. So whilst I don't think it is ABV, it could definitely have an effect. Oh yeah, no, I don't know. Like yeah, I don't know whether we've found anyone yet that's done like an eight percent or a, a dipper, which feels like a a wheat beer or a pale or something that's just really light and airy, I've had, pillowy, I've had... definitely, but maybe yeah. not quite <laughs> light. Not quite that, but I've definitely had crushable eight um, percent dippers. Mm. Easy. Mm. I tell you what was crushable. Yeah, just, like, um... Really crisp, a bit zesty. So yeah. like, yes, a bit more punch behind them, but you're like, oh, that that. That beginning taste, I just want to... Mm-hmm. And then you go. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, I had the Dea, uh Steady Rolling Man that was the double IPA, the Strata oh. one. Yeah, oh, the that Strata was, was very good. Very crushable. Yeah, I, 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 I want to go back to This is the one I had at the Hop Knocker, Knocker on tap that I was thinking oh. about when I just said this, that this exact thing and I just couldn't remember which one so I was like oh instead of boring you with a non-story with no beer label I'll just say yeah I've had one before and you've literally told me the, the one that I had that's brilliant <laughs> yeah it, that, that is a crushable dipper yeah yeah I I, I want to go back to mine and get some if, but it's a bit if anyone's, out of the way yeah, if anyone's going to do it it's going to be Dare isn't it yeah I mean they should just make double IPAs now yeah mm. nothing else Sweet. Interestingly, um, I had a very good conversation in the shop around the corner um, because uh, uh, Ranjit, who runs a shop, he's just got some uh, some more Wiper and True beers in. He's constantly rotating the, the, the beers from Wiper and True and from Arbor and, and that sort of stuff. You know, he must have sort of 15 different variations of an Arbor beer on the shelf at any kind of one time. And he said, oh, have you heard of Daya? <laughs> I'm like, I will be in here Bye. every single fucking day. If I've got Daya on the shelf around the corner, there's I'm done. There's yeah. no there's yeah. no point. I just yeah. you'll never see me again. You know, it's 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 crazy how like it hasn't quite proliferated in Bristol as much as it has up here. Because mm. like everywhere you turn, there's a Daya. There's like every new Daya about. So because yeah, it's equidistant between uh, Birmingham and Bristol. Yes, Chelsea, yeah. So yeah. I mean, Maybe it's because you have so many fancy beers already in Bristol. Um, so. I think it's popular here because one of the guys, like the guy who runs the Hop Knocker, is such a big fan that he just has like built a relationship with them. So, mm. like one of the like pseudo rotating tabs is almost always steady rolling, man. Also, Ben, you've become oh, yeah. a static man. Oh well, no, I'm pretty That's sure. So I, interesting. I don't know. Is, sure is Ben's signal defined for you? Uh, yeah, yeah, on the video and on Discord, yeah, and on on Twitch and everything. <laughs> Everywhere, all the places he, I move. Yes. Yeah, he's good. He's good. He's good for me. Good, good. Um, okay. uh, did I'll you have any down. final oh, thoughts um, from Untapped on the Warsaw Dream? Adam, uh, so, on? because I don't currently have an account, I can't look past the ah. first page, and most of it. This one of the reasons I don't like Untapped. Is most of it is people checking in, not mm-hmm. saying anything. And giving me no information. Yep. The one comment that Guilty. was there. <laughs> right? Guilty. <laughs> um, the one comment that was there was loved it apart for the. I suspect it would be even worse if it wasn't cold. Um, oh. And I kind of get what they mean on the artificial sweet finish, mm. but I think it's just the. Uh, I think it's just not very sweet, but there's just a moment where the sweetness emerges. But then you still have that bitter, and I think it's making it feel. I can see why someone might have felt aspartamey. Okay. But I think it's just two different tastes that are like congealing rather than blending. Mm-hmm. Fair, fair. But I mean, it's a very small moment from from my taste. I didn't think I didn't really pick up on it, but yeah, it's. Mm-hmm. I think what it is is there's a certain peaky bitterness that lingers, and then so when the sweet comes in, it it can come in and feel a bit aspartamey just because it has right. that. Like I said, that a bit of that. I want to quench my thirst type bitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, we'll come then, Lucy, to the maiden mm-hmm. of pain. I know, is that the beer or is it? Yeah. Is it you? I'm not sure. Mm. I mean, uh, How much Call of Duty have you been absolutely fucking destroying people? <laughs> oh, 
I would, I will get into that. Ooh. Um, because I have nothing else to talk about. Yes. Unless you want to <laughs> the same thing about Jusant again, which I'm still enjoying. But um, yes, the Maiden of Pain. It's it's got a really interesting smell. It's got like that bready maltiness, that really mm. Moorish kind of smell. But at the same time, it's got like very vibrant citrusy notes like a like a New England IPA almost hmm, okay. just like really really strong aroma what we, I know it was a rye IPA is there another yeah. adjunct in between rye and IPA on the no okay. no it doesn't tell me what hops they use what else is in here unfortunately I don't want to tilt the can too much. Mm. No, it's just um, a government warning. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know what's in here, but but yeah, as I say, like really, you know, multi aroma, but also very piney and citrusy. Nice. Ooh, it's got a nice bit of bitterness. Hmm. That is a it's a weird beer. <laughs> it's just like the aroma because it's like it's got all the um, trademarks of like a really fruit forward IPA, like, it, it, and it's got like the bitterness and maltiness of like a West Coast IPA. Mm. And I think that's that rye drawing all those, yeah, all that m- malty that. Readiness. Hmm. It's got a nice bit of carbonation. Just quite. I uh, guess a subtle bit of carbonation, like mostly smooth finish. Mm. Which, yeah, on the on the finish, you're getting more of that malt, and then that gives way to the bitterness. It's a really nice beer. I'd probably say it's. Uh, a bit like a West Coast IPA. Okay. But the bitterness is... N- it doesn't have the... the I guess it does. It, it's just a weird beer. It's like... <laughs> like a... Yeah, it's like... An IPA, what you'd think of like a West Coast IPA, which is more... You know, it goes for more for the malts and the bitter, and it's not like as fruity and as punchy as an new england ipa but it's mm-hmm. still got tons of flavor to it it's tons of fruit tons of like citrus and it just marries so well with mm. that with that rye with that breadiness with that maltiness it's just a perfectly balanced beer it's sort of, sort of like the, the best new england the best west coast ipa got together had a beautiful little baby. <laughs> That's what it's like. I think there's nice. some funky blood involved with that. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, this won't last long because I'm really enjoying fair, this. Fair. But yeah, just that nice bitter aftertaste. You never get that anymore. And it's just, mm. ooh, it's just, yeah, and the 7.5%, it's, it, it gives it, a decent amount of body in that mm-hmm. like mouth coating feel and it's very it's got a lot of moorishness to it but it's something that you could also like drink for like a nice fruity refresher at the same time it's just it's just doing so many things at the same time but doing it well and nothing's like stepping on anything else it all just harmonizes perfectly it's very good good very good good Amazing, amazing. Um, rolls nicely then into the into the West Coast uh, IPA that I've got from Polly's. I'm expecting, hopefully, some nice bitterness kind of in this. Because again, as you say, Lucy, mm-hmm. bitterness has been missing recently with, with a lot of beers. And it's something I think uh, I'm very much in the mood for. You know, especially mm-hmm. with that turn into maybe going towards more wintry kind of styles. Um, uh, and into stouts and things like that. I definitely want a bit of a heft of, of bitterness before going into that sort of mode. So, um, very light nose on on the white oak. You can see it's kind of very light in colour. Oh, yeah. It's it's not hazy. You can see my hand through the through the glass. Um, a little bit of distortion, but not a huge amount. There's a bit of carbonation when I poured the beer, but again, that's dissipated really quickly. 
um, but a nice light nose. A little sweetness. Mmm. Tends to find Polly's have like a heightened sense of sweetness to them, you know. Uh, yes. Um, yes. I don't know whether that's kind of the, the water quality or, or what they get, sort of the combination of uh, um, sort of malts to, to hops that they kind of use, but they're always a bit of a heightened sweetness. You definitely get that on this nose. It's very difficult mm -hmm. to place exactly what that sweetness is as well. It's just sweet. It just smells very sweet. It's very fruity. Hmm. I mean, that's a lovely flavour. But it's again, it's like an amalgam of different tastes that's very difficult to pick out individual mm -hmm. elements of it. Um, and that bit, in, this does have a bitterness to it. I'll get to that in a second because I'm dried out almost instantly. So, it starts off with a little bit of fruit. Starts off maybe not quite as sweet as the nose. Saying about that heightened sweetness in these in polys. Yeah. Um, don't quite get that on the flavour. It comes much more in the nose than it does in the flavour. And it's maybe a little bit of like sort of ripe melon right at the start, like that kind of flavour to it. And it is really difficult to tell. Because you kind of start off with that. Melon. And then the bitterness kind of almost kicks in straight away. And that bitterness is very, very piney. It's like I'm stood in a forest full of pine trees and they're just beating me around the head with their branches. Like it's incredibly piney. And that's mm -hmm. nice, but it's dried my mouth out so much and it's become so sort of chewy and a bit sticky that I kind of want to chase that first flavour. Mm -hmm. But it's so short that I know that I'm just going to go through this cycle again and again and again yeah. really, really quickly. And I like the flavour. I just, I, I want this to be a touch longer. You know, if it was 30 seconds long before it dried me out rather than 15, mm -hmm. this would be brilliant. And I could sort of sit and just sup it that little bit longer. But at the moment, it just dries out too quickly for me to pick out any of those initial kind of flavours. And the pineiness just takes over. That bitterness just just overrides everything else in this. Um, and again, great because I wanted a big bitter beer. Um, yeah. And the, the, the piney flavour isn't harsh. Um, it's it, 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 it's a good kind of level of bitterness to it. But I think I just need a bit more at the start, just to keep me in. And that might come mm -hmm. the more I drink it the more that might start to sort of un, uh, uh, unveil itself a little bit, the, the the way my palate kind of adapts and it might not dry out quite as quickly, you know, if by the time I get sort of halfway through the glass sort of thing. So uh, we will return to mm -hmm. all of our beers, I think. So it'd be interesting uh, um, to round out this week to see what has changed from these initial flavours as we've been drinking through. Um, but should we start where we've kind of alluded to with you, Lucy, and with, uh, with a little Call of Duty? Call of Duty. I could play it like every day. Really? <laughs> I have an issue. Yeah, even if it's for like like twenty minutes or something like that. Mm. Yeah, that almost sounds ideal. Yeah, I think that's why people play these games. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and they. I think they know how to appease people because they have these playlists, which is just basically every couple days they have a playlist where you can just play on a certain map and it's always the good maps yeah like terminal and the mad maps like rust mm. and shipment and this weekend's uh playlist or week i don't know how long it lasts uh is rust and shipment nice. and i was just that they're playing and i was just laughing my head off because <laughs> yeah. hard point on shipment uh for anyone who doesn't know hard point is basically you have to get into this like uh this rotating set of areas on the map and stay there and hold hold down the force and um only when your team is in charge of the area do you rack up kills and or mm -hmm. points um and <laughs> 
because shipment's such a small, hectic map, the hard point areas is like literally a meter by a meter, <laughs> and oh, it's amazing. just everyone like huddled <laughs> in there, <laughs> and it's just bedlam. It's just chaos, and I was just laughing my head off because it's like you die every five seconds. Yeah, <laughs> it's just, just. Oh, that madness. sounds almost like, um, skill leveling. If it's like so cra crammed, no <laughs> one can just like own everyone for too long. Well, I did because I got well, like. I know you did. Yeah. I mean, real people, people <laughs> who have, have limited <laughs> skill versus an infinite skill. <laughs> yeah, I got like a nine kill streak or something like that. So it's like, yeah, but um, yeah, it's just stupid. It's just so dumb. I'm sure the game's broken as well. <laughs> it's just like, I mean, what? Like, yeah, what? The respawns are just the, even though even you know, how are you gonna respawn? On such a on such small maps in a mm. good place, but I still think it's probably a little bit broken. <laughs> I, I, I kind of got two two things to jump in with. The first, I always remember with Rust, just have a shotgun mm -hmm. and run mm -hmm. around. And if you do manage to get killed, then you know that as soon as you spawn, someone's just going to shotgun you and you're dead again. Like it's it just the, yeah. the cycle. The, the you know you might then respawn in a in a good position to get a chance to then do the same to everybody else mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but it's really interesting that this is a really it's not as we have talked about previously weeks and weeks back about the actual game where it sits within the pantheon of call of duty games this isn't a remake mm -hmm. of call of duty 3 it is oh, oh sorry not a remake of modern warfare 3 it is mm -hmm. the third game in the reimagining of the modern warfare series and the new direction that it took but Rust is like a Modern Warfare 2 map. Oh, so and yeah, it's, Chipman's it's like a Modern, Modern Warfare, Warfare 2 yeah. map. Like, interesting. It's because it's, the... it's, it's not really a new game, right? Right, no, it's, 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 no. exactly, exactly. Like, it, this is, it's almost just, you know, we have a new engine. We have put the same game in the new engine with a different, a slightly different story for four hours mm. or whatever everyone was crying about because the campaign was too short. Um, yeah. You know, and, and they've gone, yeah. we are just kind of rinse and repeat at this point. And actually, something like Warzone, uh, the, mm. the, the, the kind of battle royale mode, is seems more of a pull than maybe the main Call of Duty game is these days. But that's, I would imagine. That's insane. I mean, it, but Wait, multiplayer. I mean, I mean, I'll take your word for it. I genuinely don't know. I, no, no, I don't know. Like I don't crazy. know. That's just yeah. uh, just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine that multiplayer, again, single player. I think for Call of Duty, after the Modern Warfare kind of, you know, Modern Warfare Black Ops, maybe Modern Warfare Two, the single player started to tail off after that kind of point, mm. um, and it became much more of a focus on the multiplayer, which was really strong in those those games as well. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that they've There's just got to a point now. In that time, yeah, it just fluctuate, and it's just like it's like waking up in Britain. It's like sometimes the weather's going to be good, sometimes it's going to be bad. But you're still gonna have to go out in it. You know? <laughs> People are still gonna buy Call of Duty. It doesn't matter if it's good or if it's bad. You know, it's it's like it's like driving down to the beach in the summer. It could piss it down with rain. You're mm. still gonna go. Mm. You're still gonna have somewhat of an enjoyable time, I guess. But um, yeah, that's what Call of Duty is. It doesn't matter if it's good or if it's bad. People will play it, which I'm, is I'm a curious. sad indictment on everything People. in this world but yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah but... i mean mm. sometimes quality is 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 getting what you expect yeah i have no expectations for call of duty and mm. the fact that it's meeting the expectations of i liked how call of duty was back in 2009 2010 mm. 11 or whatever that is what i like sure. i don't I, I don't know like are people looking for call of duty to be like groundbreaking and not just iterative like I, I i don't know who these people are what do you expect you know and i'm not even talking about like wider implications of the studio and what's going mm -hmm. on with that division it's just mm -hmm. like it's it's a yearly product it's not going to get leagues better it's oh, yeah. it's it, it, it's actually surprising when it does it's it's more likely to get worse with such a short turnaround of 
development cycles, you know? Interestingly, mm. I, I, I was curious because you, you said you're having so much fun. I'm like, oh, that Warzone is free. What if I downloaded that and took it? Took it and then I opened the Steam page and it's like mostly negative, recent, mostly negative total. <laughs> oh. uh, and people are not happy with Warzone, apparently. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't know if I... We're not happy with paying gas and electric. We still have to do it, you know. <laughs> it's just like, it just well, seems like yeah, just people are complaining. It's like, why? Is he gonna buy it anyway? You're gonna play it anyway? Wasn't that like really funny meme of like people saying that they're gonna boycott a Call of Duty and then someone screenshotted like everyone in that Reddit post and it was all online playing Call of Duty or something? <laughs> was Call of Duty well, that game? I can't remember, but... Just going by the Steam reviews that um, apparently there was cosmetics people paid for, um, multiple people said they bought DLC, they bought cosmetics, and then those things disappeared in, in the in the Modern Warfare 3 update. Oh. As in they took things away. I right. think from, the game is guilty. I think the game is a victim of forcing this kind of, like, you know, monetization. Yeah, I mean, that's people. the problem. None it's of this a... should be monetized at all, so it shouldn't matter if it disappears. You'd be like, oh, I earned that. My time should be pissed. Yeah. I should be pissed about, but also it's a new game. Like, also the fact that this is a game that is a sequel to a game that is also built on the free game, mm. and they're all the same thing, and so if you yeah. want to play one of these games, you have to download 70 to 120 gigs of assets because you're yeah. getting all three because they're secretly the same game and it's just yeah. a few lines of code yeah. that won't let you do like it's insane that you they literally make you get the assets and also that these assets are so uncompressed and poorly coded that they're huge <laughs> yeah and i'm sure like the lara croft suit is like op and pay to win but anyway uh that may just be me maybe it's just people who are very good suit? I'm pretty sure it's Is there a level off. full of, of scantily clad women that there you is, blend yeah. into? Yeah, is that is. why it's OP? She's, she's, she, no, she's, 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 she's got the holsters on the shorts and, you know, like... It's the classic... It's Lara Croft. Classic yeah, teal, yeah. teal top and, and yeah. shorts, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's like... I think they wanted their cake and eat it too. Like, have a £60, £70 product every year. Mm. And... Not have monetization yeah. things, season passes, yeah. or passes, and then not. It, it's such a, it's sad because it's like oh, having a free to play kind of thing like like Apex Legends or Destiny now or whatever. Mm. Like yeah. the studios are expected to keep up with content and this and that, and to have like a pretty robust underlying online system which call of duty has but i don't think it was ever built the engine to support like as you say hundreds of skins battle passes this events and that and the other maybe maybe it's probably holding up a decent amount but hmm. maybe it wasn't built for that maybe the teams weren't built for like you know churning out endless content and skins i don't know but it's just like it just seems yeah you wanted your cake and you eat it too and now people are disappointed because it's not promising everything that a online a game as a service online game usually would in this in these horrible times that we live in. Yeah, it's like the expectation from players has gone up. It's like I, I all all this battle, but I just press B, skip all, and it's like I don't care. I and and the unlocking system is so convoluted i don't understand it yeah. so guess what i'm gonna do i'm gonna play with the opening assault rifle or the one that i unlocked right after that and i'm just gonna put on the attachments that i know that i can unlock just by leveling up the yeah. ones where it's like i have to complete like free daily challenges or this and that it's like okay screw that i'm not doing that i'm just gonna yeah, have no scope no optic and no i'm just scope. gonna and I'm just gonna be like, look, I'm still the best player on the team because I don't care. It's like I don't care if my gun has this skin or this. Just a Kimbo it, SMGs, just bog yeah. standard, blah 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 blah, dead. It's, it's like fine tuning to that amount is insane to me because it's like 
what's the point? <laughs> I mean, it's it's an interesting kind of uh, uh, in terms of, I suppose at least consumer power. Mm-hmm. In that, I don't know whether Activision have taken any notice and whether things in that sort of space in Warzone or anything has shifted. But I did read today about Destiny Two pulling. They've just started a new season and they pulled what they were calling a starter kit. Um, so basically if you're kind of not necessarily new to destiny but if you're coming back to destiny 2 and you're jumping back in you could buy this starter kit for i don't know like 15 quid or something but it was it was full of old weapons Mm -hmm. that are quite specific to certain builds it was quite uh, um i suppose limited or a bit stingy in the kind of currencies and materials that you would get with it there's like cosmetic items in there as well which i guess depends on your taste whether you like them or not and i think that the, <laughs> you want to play some Nicki minaj and yeah. <laughs> but it's, oh, yeah. it's interesting that the conversation around this because bungie pulled you know as soon as people were like this is shit why would you want to if you bought this anyone who's played the game is will tell you you're an absolute fucking mug uh, for mm. picking this up because it's a lot of money for not very much kind of product um, mm. but Bungie have pulled it so they're, they're not selling it anymore whether they issued refunds to people who had I don't know yeah. whether it's just yeah. a right we pulled that because we don't like the product as such and we'll deal with the fallout of that and give people who have bought it other stuff I don't know whether mm. anything has happened around that with, with Call of Duty because no, seems... they still haven't pulled the Groot suit which but, is so impossible this is to see Call of Duty seems even like more fucking absurd no. right Call of Duty is absurd in the skins and <laughs> cosmetics that you can kind of get for it, and they Activision well, especially when none of these are branded. They're just like fucking. It's, just like, like, oh, it's like oh well, we wanted to people to people like Groot. Okay, well we'll just make a Groot. How do we make it sure that Disney doesn't do it? I don't know. We'll make, we'll make it more like empty. We'll just get rid of half of Groot, and then it can't be Groot because Groot's a pretty full, but like a trunk. It was like, well, what if we just have holes in it? I was like, oh, well, now it's easier to hide as this thing. That yes, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's, I don't even think it's actually modeled off Groot. I think it's just a kind of suit, and then people call it the Groot suit. I know. <laughs> My point is that they're yeah. doing all these random things. Right? Yeah, I'm sure Spawn is in there. Like, oh, really? Yeah, I, or, or someone that. I yeah. mean. A model you know that you, looks very you, much like it. You know you should never play as that because everyone knows there's at least three guys on every round who spawn camp. Hey. <laughs> You're just going to get killed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah but, it's, it's always bizarre. Like, go the other way to something like Fortnite, which does sell for, you know, I don't know whether it's reasonable or not, but sells for money certain skins and packs and things but because of the aesthetic and the kind of game that it is i think fortnite can get away with you being like superman or yeah john c absolutely just like the most absurd fucking things to be able to run around and you know yeah i'm I'm superman but i'm shooting you with a sniper rifle Mm. uh you know it it is literally just the cosmetic if you want to look like superman cool give us a give us five quid and you can run around and look like superman yeah yeah i mean one of the dangers is when they make a mistake like a groot suit and if they're (laughs) if you're paying for it Mm. yeah and you have to refund everyone when you nerf or when you get rid of it (sighs) or you try and nerf it so now it's superman but he's you know not i don't know Clark Kent. Wearing a black suit instead of a <laughs> blue one. I don't know what environment in Superman skin would be open. I bright guess blue. <laughs> it's the or, human or, one that's bright pink that I just can't. I can't reconcile, reconcile in my head. Like, that's, no, that's but perfect. why? Why is it bright? It's perfect Pink because it's never going to be OP. You want all your skins to be <laughs> batched and stupid, and then people are not hiding based on what they bought, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the bigger, the wider the birth of dumbass, <laughs> the, the easier it is to make, not worry. But again, it would be interesting if they've got, like, suddenly, as the, as the Groot suit has kind of brought up, whether they have sell, sold, like, ghillie suits and stuff for, you know, uh, for money. That it, it, it does feel like more of a pay to win because you have mm. that advantage by being in a suit which is literally meant to be camouflaged rather than just absurd <laughs> pink bikini lady running around <laughs> fucking going nuts like I, I don't think to be fair i don't think she's in a bikini i think she's just okay. in a, like just 
one piece suit. <laughs> Oh, it's so, so cute. Even, even I, more I don't pink. think there are. Yeah, it, which is the opposite of pay to win. To be fair to them, I don't think they have uh, intentional pay to win things. I think it's just like you know, just yeah. um, you know, a mishap or mm-hmm. you know, just someone being very short sighted, putting a impossible to see Groot suit um, <laughs> on the level. But uh, yeah, it's it, it's so stupid. <laughs> Oh, I get it. Again, like, I'm not engaging with half of its systems or unlocks or anything. Not in fact, it's like half, ninety nine percent, and it's like still having fun. So those well, maps I mean, are good. good. Good proof that people don't need to engage in the system; they can just enjoy the yeah. the, the base product, yeah. uh, not having to to lean into everything. So, mm-hmm. um, cool, cool. I, I imagine Modern Warfare Three may. <laughs> Rear its big yeah, brutish cool. head. I really um, want to write something yeah, about yeah. it, but it's okay. just—I'd probably just be like, the multiplayer. Game. Yeah, I'd be like, whisper to people who liked Call of Duty way back when, just like, look, it's not for the kids; it's for us oldies. <laughs> for us, it's one for us. Seven reasons. <laughs> Maybe the last one. Seven reasons why <laughs> Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty, is for the almost dead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good good um yes it, call of duty may may appear again as a talking point depending maybe on i'm how much better Lucy at is it. Playing. maybe i'm better at it than everybody because i turned off this is another thing that you didn't have to do with call of duty i had to turn off like literally every you know fairy dust setting that makes a game look pretty it's right like, Mm. Not all this motion blur stuff and this head sway and this head bob and crap. It's just like, how does anyone see? It was like it was like someone smeared Vaseline on my TV before I changed <laughs> everything. It's like, no wonder nobody can play this game as good as I can. <laughs> mm. But yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Mm. Be interesting to see if people lean into the accessibility options. Um, which there are a lot to and, be fair and, which and is pretty good like, this is the colorblind mode so we make everybody red like brilliant fine yeah just just make everybody <laughs> yeah. red so yeah, i can great. just see them all yeah. constantly mm-hmm. um no, cool it's, it's good with the, in that respect mm. so that's, that's good. one thing going for. good mm. uh lucy you also mentioned just some which i yeah. uh i want to just spend five minutes on maybe because um, I mm-hmm. have been playing it mm-hmm. um, and really really enjoying it um, yeah. this Thanks. is this is my kind of fucking game um, yeah. I constantly I keep experiencing little things with this where I just sort of like nod to myself like yes this is mm. this is this is an excellent video game <laughs> yeah just, like as a, as a kind of as a package as an experience it's not going to be everyone's uh, kind of cup of tea. It's it very much a. No, it's not a walking simulator, but it is a climbing simulator <laughs> in which not a huge amount happens, apart from <laughs> the traversal and ascending up the yeah. the environment essentially, and the different kinds of puzzly ways of being able to do that. Um, but what I really like about it is it evokes so many other games and the experiences that I've kind of had with them. Mm. So it's got a feel of, um, and, and very much through its kind of tone and the aesthetic, uh, uh, Kena, Bridge of Spirits, uh, which was mm. a great game, very different kind of game, a bit more of an action kind of game. Um, but it feels like that at times, the way that the light and the shadow and the just the, the, the kind of the different environments sort of inside versus outside whether you're in the mm-hmm. sun whether you're in the shade like that works really really well in this game and they've really pretty yeah it's really pretty but it also feels incredibly considered as well mm-hmm. you know that suddenly you're moving through the spaces and it goes the sun is out and that has a slightly different effect on things you're like well of course it does yeah but brilliant mm-hmm. great but then they've just brought that in for yeah, you to have yeah. to then deal with i'm like cool yeah i, like I recently this. came across that mechanic i'm i'm in chapter three i think still yeah. um mm. but yeah i think considered is a brilliant word to use because it's just it, it's it's one mechanic 
done really well. Mm. Um, yeah, it is just climbing, but yeah, it just adds small little increments, like you know the environmental, you know the heat thing, and just like oh, and then there's different kinds of um, you know things, the flora and the fauna that yeah. help you traverse uh these you know rock cliffs and stuff like that just small little details like nothing you know revolutionary nothing that majorly changes the mechanics or the game overall but just nice little things just to keep you going um yeah i'm really enjoying it i'm really enjoying it and it's like i'm i'm trying to savor it because i'm enjoying it that mm, much it's like because mm. i could Mm. could just like smash it out just like in one go but it's like no i want to want to save the climb you know absolutely I enjoy mount Everest and it's, it, and, you know. it's the other the other game that it reminds me of is journey right because it, it has that feel that the idea that you want to experience the space that you're in you want to mm -hmm. savor the experience of that and it just doesn't have the mm. uh, uh uh that the shared experience idea that, that journey has where you're moving through the environment with another kind of cool character. That would be. Yeah. And it, it would be very cool. Absolutely. Yeah. If you could just see someone like just a little bit ahead of you on a on a different <laughs> kind of climb. Drop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's very, very forgiving, just sounds yeah. in in yeah. uh in that. You can't just jump mm -hmm. off the edge. You know, it won't no, allow no, you no. to just send <laughs> your character to his death. Um but I think that would be a very cool thing to mm -hmm. to experience. But it's more <laughs> like, it, and the reason it reminds me of Journey is more like the moments of wonder, where you kind of yeah. climb up something, you get to the, the, the top of that climb, and you step up onto uh, the, the, the precipice and just see the expanse kind of before yeah. you. Or you see these like Im very crazy kind of buildings and stuff. Like, and you're like, oh, I can... It's not just the 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 writing and things that you find in the environment which are telling you the story it's the environment itself it does a mm -hmm. really good job of telling you the story of this big rock sticking out of the ground through the ages through yeah the, the you know through climate change and the way that the water has receded down i know yeah, yeah. different very different true. environments it's really really good works very very well yeah and like one of the most satisfying things in a video game is like seeing how far you've come Mm. Sort of like a metroidvania where you go to, back to a, like a starting area and just slaughtering everything there. Mm -hmm. Like just seeing like, oh, I climbed from that little ledge down there. And yeah. it's like, oh, I've, I've come a long way. And just, yeah, and just looking out like, because you, the way the camera is, especially when you're climbing, it's like it's so focused on like just where you are. Yes. It doesn't zoom out or anything like that. So it's like you're you're just you feel like you're oh just in that contained little space and then when you actually look out like at the vista and like mm. see how yeah the the tide has literally receded and it's just like just rocks out where the sea would be it's it's quite striking so yeah yeah i'm really enjoying this mm. um yeah i they should make a sequel that has journey like mechanics where oh, yeah there's all, where there's like I don't know, Sylvester Stallone or or Cliffhanger or <laughs> or Jim Carrey like uh slacklining <laughs> and crying out for his monkey that felt like, yeah. only like Ace Ventura <laughs> Put those skins <laughs> into something too. Oh that uh, just suddenly just turns into fucking Stallone trying to climb up the climb up yeah. the mountain. Um it's what I what I kind of uh, again to to evoke another game. What I sort of want from Jusant is very similar mm -hmm. to Journey, but also um, similar to Celeste. In like that, Celeste is such a good game in mm -hmm. terms of the way that it builds and builds and builds and teaches you how to be better and helps you. It doesn't throw you in at the deep end. It, it allows you to just improve on those puzzles as they get more difficult. And the end of Celeste is such a ride. And I think it's the same with that, the, the sort of the end of Journey. It's such mm -hmm. a... The finish on those two games is phenomenal. And I mm -hmm. think that is that is going to be sort of whether for me, just sound is like 
one of the better games of the year or not is going to be if mm. it has that kind of finish to it. Yeah. Whether it just has that kind of like, you know, it is all about climbing. And it's not just about endless climbing. It is about that sense of mm -hmm. wonder. It's about that sense of discovery and, and these kinds of things. But whether actually just sound, has that kind of emotional pull that those other mm. two games kind of have towards yeah. the end of that. You know, you've had this experience. You've, you've taken this character across this huge ascent. And mm -hmm. when you get to that, actually, whatever the end point is... Yeah. It has that same impact that those other two I, I hope it doesn't because I don't want to cry. Because um, I, <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, oh yeah, the uh, the art style sort of reminds me of like Rhyme. Remember yes, that yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, I wasn't expecting the ending for that game. And mm. it's like, I hope this does nothing similar. I hope it's just like, yeah, you know, climb the top of the mountain, go, you know, inhale, exhale. Okay, and time to go back there. Done, thanks. Yeah. Didn't find anything. Didn't find the water. Time to, to go back there and have some scram. Just find yeah. another one. <laughs> yeah. Just find yeah. another one to climb. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, oh, that was fun. Cool. <laughs> back there. <laughs> yeah. I just, it, it would be good if it had that emotional payoff, but I, I don't think I want that. Yeah, just this I just want a calm climbing. Yeah, just a monumental abseil down to the bottom. <laughs> Or there's Ooh, a there's a paraglider yeah. up the top or something, and you just circle oh, on your way yes. back down, just seeing everything that you've experienced yes. as you as you sort yeah. of go down. So, um, yeah, I, I'm on um, mm -hmm. I'm on chapter four. Uh, okay. I don't know how many chapters there are. I know Adol, you, you when mm. we were talking about this last week, you said it's about three or four hours long, something yeah. like that. Um, I am currently on five hours. It's four hours. It's four total. So four. Okay. four it's four with main and extras at five and a half. Okay, cool. So I've I've explored. And I've looked through the yeah, Allegedly going through the main story is like seven and a half hours or okay. eight and a half cool. extras. Okay, so no, I'm, you're probably I'm, yeah nearing the end. Yeah, I'm just over five. So maybe it's a sort of a five chapter kind of game, mm -hmm. um, or, or maybe six with the with the shorter kind of finish perhaps. Um, but yes, uh, hopefully. Yeah. I, I, I kind of. It's one where I want to I want to get to the end. I want to see yeah, what absolutely. that ending is, but I also just want this to go on and on and on a bit, <laughs> yeah. so I can just keep experiencing Last, yeah. same. Uh, that 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 same sort of feeling that I'm mm -hmm. getting from this. So um, I could always play it again, but you're never going to experience the same kind of initial discovery and things no, no. Uh, with it. So um, yeah, I, it's neat. It's really good. Mm, really mm. good. Um, I'm sure we'll talk about just that then. Again, at a later point during this year, I would imagine. But Very much likely. Before yeah. we get anywhere near that. Adol, have you got anything you want to uh, 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 chat about this week? Any games you've managed to, to fit in? I know you've had an incredibly busy week. Yeah, um, I've managed to play Connections every day. So okay. Look at that. Yeah. And, and introduced um, random people at work slash at the pub, uh, the post work pub pint before heading home. Um, yeah, so that was good. Um, did we talk about Tiles, the other New York Times game? I don't think we did. Oh, your New York Times. No, I didn't. I, I, don't, I haven't. Um, this is not something. Yeah, you know, that, actually, yeah, one yeah, thing, yeah. I've never thought I was good at crosswords, and because I go to the New York Times games page every morning now. Um, <laughs> they got you. <laughs> they got So that I do the mini, and it's easy. Mm -hmm. I do it in under yeah. two minutes almost every day, and it's like, great, cool. Two I minutes? Yeah. I do it in like under 20 seconds. I don't have time to read the questions. I'm not trying to do them fast. <laughs> I'm just... um, so the, the like, so Connections is great. I played Vertex and thought there was a daily puzzle. It turns out there's just like seven puzzles. And once no. you've done them, you need to subscribe. And I was like, oh, um, damn. Right. Because Vertex is a really neat thing where you're basically, mm -hmm. it's like um, slightly producing um, uh, a connect the dots where you're making. Um, Triangle-based um, polygonal images. Okay. So I'll every you're making, you're gonna form the triangles, and it, you know every node says the number of nodes it connects to, like number four or whatever. But it doesn't matter unless you want to pay money. You'll you'll only ever play it four times or whatever. Right. Um, but tiles is my favorite game that's not connections because you get like a, I don't know, like a six by six grid or something. I don't know what it was. It's actually probably more rectangular. Yeah, four by 
six, yeah, maybe four by six. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's uh, essentially each box is a layer of elements, um, and they make weird looking pictures. Today's was particularly hard because they were all Mondrian esque, and so it was hard to see where the borders were. But mm -hmm. sometimes it's just like you know, uh, a squiggle line uh, in blue. And in the four corners, um, is, are they rounded in blue or are they, like, square and black? And basically add four layers of that type where there might mm -hmm. be, like, a central image, something in the back, in the middle, and they're all tiled, like, they're layered on top of each other. And yeah. the point is you just click on one square and then you click on another square that shares an element and those two elements disappear. Mm -hmm. Basically right. every element has, I think, four layers. Yeah, um, two tulips one would be a good one to. I don't know if you've seen that one yet, but it's like each part of the tulip, like the type of the shape of the flower or the color of the uh, flowers or the you know. Yeah, I saw that one. Leaves days, on the stem and stuff. How many like leaves that. are on yeah. the stem? Yeah, yeah. Is it a orange or a blue flower? Is it mm -hmm. drooping? Is it not? Yeah, that one. Yeah, and so. The point is, though, what really gets me is once you get to that second one and it takes those things away, so it simplifies the image, you are then now stuck with that as your first pick to find a match on your next ones. And you're trying to, and you've got a combo score, and it'll tell you your max combo that you've done for the round, or it says you're cur currently on whatever. So the idea would be like, I've got an orange tulip drooping, orange tulip drooping. I click that, click that. Now the orange tulips disappear, and then all whatever elements are left on this, the second box that I clicked, I now have to find a box that has a shared element. Mm. And so you can kind of look ahead slash kind of chain it around or stop and have to hunt around. Mm. Um, but the point is, the way I play it is you never miss, and your combo should be the total entire game playthrough. You should just never, you should just match all the way through. Mm. And so if the your score, your current combo, and your max combo aren't the same number. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> because then it's challenge, like because then it's fun because you're That's you're not pausing and you're right. Otherwise, you could kind of you could just like randomly click and get all the mm -hmm. way through. Sure. Right. Um, but that's actually really good. And sometimes your brain, like so, for the tulip one, I could see like I could easily pattern recognize yeah. and just stream through and got a you know, fifty combo score. Great. I clicked all the things and I never made a mistake. I'm a cool, good, good boy. The game <laughs> likes me. <laughs> but yeah, some of those abstract the, ones. The, are the really one on this hard. One today was really hard. I and I, I actually, I made two mistakes. One was a misclick because I couldn't, I didn't, couldn't see the boundaries properly and just clicked mm -hmm. sort of not quite to the left of where the boundary was. Um, and one of them was a gen genuine mistake, right? It was just like a. Oh, I can't. I think maybe this lines up, but like the differences sometimes are very minute, right? It could oh, yeah. be like easily done. Yeah, easily. A done. white panel that's intersecting with a uh, yellow panel, as in like it looks like in in two D space. It looks like it's mm -hmm. a little like a hook hanging on things, but some of them are thinner and some of them are thicker. Like it's very easy to do, but also some of the middle elements are quite wide, and so if you mm. do what I did before, which was kind of click through it and just like not plan, I got to a point where I had a mostly empty cell that had one element left, and but I had just used that box too many times, and so it was like, I actually can't see past most of the elements that share this corner of this thing, so I guess I'll have to guess, because I can't tell. Like, too much of the thing that it needs to match is obscured. So I thought yeah. it was really neat. I was like, oh, actually this to ensure a full run, you kind of do need to like do some more planning than I had thought because the previous few nights, the things were just much more discreet. They weren't overlapping as much. So I could kind of like be like, oh, hold on. Uh, uh, it's, this one definitely matches, right? I could take the pause. So more fun than you would think, I would sure. say. Yeah, yeah. Nice. It's and been, then the other ones are less to, good. It's been great to uh, hear you and my sister discover the New York Times uh, games. It's just like, oh, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a subscriber for years. I'm well, old you never G told me that veteran. there were other games besides Stupid Crossword. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's a there's a timeline quiz one there. It happens every Monday where you just yeah. have to... If you say so. Where you have to... <laughs> 
like, okay, what year did this happen? And you have to drag it on the timeline. Did it have to happen? Mm. Oh, before I, I or after? It was a board game. Ooh, I like that. Mm, that board yeah. game is fun and hard. There's, there, there was another game mm -hmm. like that a few years ago. I mean, maybe it might be the same one if, if New York Times. No, I don't know whether Wordle and their purchasing of it is was a one-off or whether actually they have just gone along and bought you know experiences mm. and brought them into that kind of their little gaming kind of ecosystem. Uh, but there was another like online quiz that was like all the rage three, four mm. years ago. It might be around twenty twenty actually. Again, mm. similar kind of time, maybe around sort of the COVID times, where uh, uh, um, the idea of pulling things on a uh, um, kind of like a timeline. Um, mm. and like was it you know one of these was before 1962 and it will show you like two images right. yeah. two famous images and you'd be oh, like, oh, okay. which one of these was was that sort of thing right. um, I'm surprised what's the other one that everyone was playing for a while um, where you had the outline of a country and you had to guess oh, what, the, oh, yeah. what the country was Worldle Worldle yes, yes. Worldle Worldle um, yeah, I, I, the New York Times seems almost like a space for all of these kind of mm. Java-based experiences. Uh, yeah, <laughs> not Java New anymore. Um, <laughs> New York Times is equal to grounds. New yeah. York Times. New <laughs> grounds. <laughs> um, good. Okay. okay. Um, I did try Connections a couple of times. It was fun. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I tried one the other day um, and I because I understood premise of what was going on i just hit it i just got them all right on the first kind of run through yeah. um mm -hmm. like cool i've i don't think i need to play this again now <laughs> like you're like i get this like, i've i've, I've, I've got it i've completed yeah. it i don't need to do this again thank you yeah. oh but the, the fun is the is <laughs> sometimes it's not as easy to spot the category that's sure. interesting yeah 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 because yeah. Like, i played it the first time i was like oh i like doing this type of categorization mm -hmm. like de deduction <laughs> I'm hooked, and you're like, oh, I see. Game work like this. Bye. <laughs> Very much, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it makes sense. Like, yeah, yeah, it's just like, I, I, yeah, and it's like I go back because, like, I subscribe for the crosswords, and it's like I do the crossword every day, and then these things are just like around the crossword, so it's like, yeah, I'll do that. Mm. Don't mm. always do vertex, and I can't stand letterbox. That doesn't well, letterbox compute in garbage. my mind. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> um... So yeah, and I don't. Yeah. I, I did Wordle a couple of times for old time's sake, and there was like, <laughs> yep, it's still the same. I did. Yeah. I did enjoy. What I will say is, Lucy, you mentioned the Wordle bot, and I was like, oh, this is neat. Mm -hmm. This is cool. Mm -hmm. I can see why. Like, I get why you're saying you play the uh, game just to beat the Wordle bot. Yeah, and I get angry um, when I don't, and I shout at my computer when <laughs> I don't, even though it's is, irrational that, that I do. You're starting <laughs> word, then. do you, I do change you it every day. Or... I'm not a oh, you boring do, you do. person. Yeah. I'm not a okay. weirdo who has starting. Why would um, you not? If you had the option, I'm not doing things every, day, every day like you. So uh, <laughs> I, I I change every day. Something you know. That's well, good because it's better than fighting. people are just because like, mm, you're just basically theory. a wordle bot. Then starting with slate every morning. Like, mm -hmm. oh, stupid wordle yeah. bot. I lost to it today. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I got I it in I four. Where's where the what got it in three? Because mm. of course. Yeah. Oh yeah, I got it in four. <laughs> yeah. What was Let's... it again? It was. Um... I, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. It was and it wasn't. Was it, was it remix? Or was it? Well, maybe resin. Resin. Oh, sorry. Oh. Well, hold on. Let me let me see. I don't think I got it in one. <laughs> <laughs> I beat the Wordle bot. <laughs> <laughs> I did read an article of like how many people cheat at Wordle. I'm just thinking, what is What's the point? How do, you, how do you cheat at Wordle? Literally looking up the oh, answer well, and then. Did. Oh, right. Okay. Or you open an Argentine Pugito and you figure it out, and then you're like, account. Sure. Mm -hmm. Right, if you have a. I can understand that account. actually figuring it out, but literally just looking up the answer just to write it, it's just yeah, that's, insane yeah, to ridiculous. me. Yeah, ridiculous. stupid. Like, you got, you got <laughs> excellent. You have 100 internet points. Congratulations, you got the answer correct. Um, yeah. Let's talk about something... I mean, something... it's not like a crossword streak. Um, yeah. Let me see what my crossword <laughs> streak is. I mean, that it takes is... takes work, mate. That takes work. Oh, that, yeah, that's, re yeah. that's real work. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, um, something which I'm, isn't. I'm assuming we're real work. closer to ending, and I shouldn't crack a beer. You crack a beer if you want. Go for it. Yeah, mate. I'll probably. I've still got. Okay. Maybe. Well, oh, in that case, maybe half of the camera. Wow. This is a beer yeah, that's been lingering. Finish is just. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is a beer that's been lingering on my shelf since I came to um, back from Bristol. And in mm. fact, if you can see, it was lingering on a shelf in Bristol, clearly, because look at that dust. <laughs> um, it's the Arbon, Arbor Brixton Brewery Collab ah, Cherry nice. Amaretto Stout. Oh. Yeah, oh. that's why I'm I, I held on to the podcast. Mm -hmm. So it's brewed with our friends from Brixton Brewery and inspired by everyone's favorite Italian liqueur. This decadent stout has flavors of almond, delicate sweet cherry, and a hint of chocolate. Uh, and it is... A full pint in a can because it's Arbor and it's six percent. Nice. I've seen it on the shelf uh, or on the yeah. shelves, and uh, I've just never really cherry and amaretto is not a uh, not really a flavour combination that I'm. I don't, I don't. I don't really like amaretto. I, mean, I like amaretto. I don't like cherry. <laughs> mm. Um, but mostly it's the um. Was it was bought for me? Sure. Birthday. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. A while ago uh, now. Uh, my crossword. And also, my streak. celebration of my birthday was less a while. <laughs> I've also uh, spilled a little bit on my trousers. Whilst mm. you're sorting your trousers out, I'm on a 36 day streak for my crossword. That means I'll you've got, what, the whole thing? Yeah, yeah, like. In under five minutes? Like, what... No, it just means I've been able to complete it 36 days in a row. Nice. Um, I want to get better at that because. Um, I'll give you one guess what my longest streak is. 36. No. Ooh. 104. No. It's in well. the 60s. I was going to say I was going to say about 55, but okay. Mm. Six, 64. 68. Come on, this is the layup. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, Lucy. Is nice. it is it 420? <laughs> I wish. I said nice, no, I stand by it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 69. Yeah. Nice. Maybe so I should you, just leave it at that. Maybe yeah, I, I was like, well, let me definitely. Yeah. What you want to do is get a 68 streak, skip a yeah. day, get a 68 streak, skip yeah. a day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so. How's the beer? Poor, quite heady. Um, a little, it's actually a bit red in the uh, head. I don't know if you can tell it. So I got this, like, reddy, browny tone. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, it smells like. Yeah, amaretto, so a bit of uh, almond. Not too, um, yeah, and a little bit of, of fruit. I wouldn't say it's clearly amaretto and cherry, but it's definitely okay. You, you having read the tin, you're like, ah, yes, that's nose. Mm -hmm. I do like amaretto. You can't, I can't have too much because it, it is very sweet, but it is too sweet. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anything. A like friend of mine it. once bought a bottle for to take to a party mm -hmm. back in the days when you took a bottle of booze to a party. Yep, and I was like, "Hmm, I'm getting sick of this. I might be sick, not because of the alcohol, but just because of the sugar." Yeah, yeah. Um, too much. <laughs> oh, um, I wouldn't call it a decadent step. In fact, I'm a little surprised. So it's, I guess it's only six percent. I guess I have my perennial problem of wanting more viscosity off of darker beers especially ones that are trying mm -hmm. to like be more boozy right like amaretto is mm -hmm. a high, reasonably high um percentage and so i'm kind of surprised how thin this tastes but um is amaretto like 30s yeah it's proper liqueur right yeah um, it's good yeah. 37.5 nice. or 40 one of those two um I would say that it definitely has the sweet cherry, but not a lot of it, and it definitely has the almond. Um, works really well with the stout, sort of the, the malty backbone of a stout. Mm. It's not too malt forward, but it's doing a lot of the work. It's doing the beer work, and then on top of that, sort of like a, almost like a generic, but not in a bad way, stout base, and then you've got this like almondy layer um, with hints of this sweet cherry. I think. Like sweet cherry, like but like, I've picked cherries and sweet, not like 
sweet cherry is and like candied cherries sure. or cherries you get you know in a tin or chocolate covered cherries which are just like an insanely sweet cherry taste you're thinking it's a light cherry taste that has a sweetness to it um not less sour but still are kind of actual cherry um and what i really like is on the finish is when this like cacao chocolate taste comes in mm. which helps balance it off because i think otherwise i would be a little that sweetness is still quite like it's well, actually now that my palate's gotten a little more used to the malts it's quite sweet and so the the fact that the very end of the finish that cacao kind of brings itself forward and works well with helping like you're thinking like a dark it might be a hint of chocolate but it's like a dark chocolate so you're getting it's working well with the bitterness of the beer and just making it feel a bit like i said a little more balanced so you're not just like ah yes amaretto cherry and now I'm, that's just fading me into feeling weird about this beer. It's like, oh yes, the chocolate is, or the, that chocolatey taste is helping make it be like, yes, it's finishing like a beer. Mm. Um, I will say I wouldn't have two of these in a row having had four sips. This is just not like that type of beer. Sure. What was the percentage? Six. Okay. So not too big, but no, probably no, yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. big this enough flavor. My second beer. Yeah, yeah. Big enough flavor though that it's, it's. You know, we've said this before with sort of other beers and those pint kind of cans, that there are some beers they produce which very much say like sharing can or something on mm. them when they're you know up yeah, towards the ten odd percent. Uh, but it wouldn't go amiss as a label on the can as well potentially mm. uh, for ones that do have that slightly more punchy kind of flavour combination to them. This yeah. uh Amaretto is twenty eight percent. Is that all? Only twenty. Oh shit! I take it back. Don't buy this beer. Just get just get swig straight from the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably find a cherry flavor. Uh, cherry. It seems to be a cherry flavor of everything else you can fucking buy. So I'll just stick some dried cherries in there. Mm. Age. Yeah. Then chuck it. Ch chuck the cherries in. Leave it for a year. Mm -hmm. Come back to mm -hmm. it. See how it is. Mm -hmm. so, nice. Good. Um, okay. Yeah. So that's um. That's that basically. I mean, yeah. Like. Yeah. We'll see if it's changed at all towards the end of the episode as you're drinking through, um, which won't be very far away. I will just mention that I have been spending some time with the with the PlayStation Five, uh, and uh, mostly playing Ratchet and Clank. A Rift Apart, Ooh. which is mm -hmm. a very, very good game. It's Ratchet and Clank. It's more of the same. I can't remember what the the, the PS4 game uh, um, was called, but I'm pretty sure there's an episode where we talk about it, uh, and all of us are basically like, this is very good game. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think Rift Apart is of the same vein. It's a very good game. It's a great experience. Uh, it's a little bit not disjointed but i think they wanted to let players experience lots of different as it almost as a and it as kind of like a one of those first ps5 games like you play the standard kind of action adventure third person kind of game but then it throws you into some extra bits there's some puzzles that you play with clank mm -hmm. there's um mm -hmm. you you have a spider character like a robot spider which is going around in a computer killing viruses and stuff there's there's kind of bits thrown into this which seem a bit superfluous to the main kind of game but i think they've they sort of went what else can we do um the biggest thing and i think with with both uh, uh rift apart and with the ps5 is is just that that ssd and just how mm, absurd, mm -hmm. absurdly quick this 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 machine and this game is at loading in, um, and we 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 know f even from the PS4 and the first Spider-Man how quick that how quick Insomniac got that game to, and again with Ghost of Tsushima as well and Sucker Punch, how quick they got those load mm -hmm. times to go to, but the PS5 is is something else. It's it's. Yeah. I'd imagine it's very similar with the with the new Xbox or the, the newer models yeah. of Xbox as well. Just how quick yeah. they are at being able to it, do everything. It is, and it's probably like a one of those features where it's like, God, how did we live without this? But 
I remember when that was touted as like such a massive thing. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, the games are still crap. Yeah, <laughs> no, I mean, who cares? It just means I can <laughs> play this bad game even quicker. Sure. Um, yeah, obviously not Ratchet and Clank, because as you say, that's a very good game. But it's just funny how like, especially with PlayStation, actually how like you know like the whole Dual Sense thing. They've done that mm. quite a lot with the last two consoles. How the or even going back to the Kinect with Xbox, it's like, look at this thing. This is sure. going to revolutionize gaming. And then in the end, it's like, nobody cares. <laughs> oh, my. Do, do, playing mm. playing those um, computer virus levels, mm-hmm. I don't know why, but they've mm-hmm. decided that whenever you shoot, the, the pad will vibrate oh. violently. <laughs> and Violently. But That's violently. A... It's, it's like... <laughs> yeah. And... You know, it's the whole idea behind adaptive triggers, right? And, and mm-hmm. the, the way that it, it gives you that feedback. And Kim is like, turn it off. <laughs> I'm getting so incredibly annoyed <laughs> with just this constant clack, 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 clack. And I'm like, but I've got my headphone in. How can you hear any of this? And it is literally just the noise that the control pad is making from through the vibration, through the adaptive mm. triggers. Then she's just like, no, I hate this. I hate it already. Why? Oh, why did I give you money to drill. buy this? Like, it is. It is. Really is. Especially when she's just like looking on her phone, and I've got yeah. the headphones plugged in, so there's the, the room is pretty silent. You're suddenly just the like, whole ah, house just... shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Kids wake up. It's a whole fucking yeah. thing. Like, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, oh. it, it'd be it'd be interesting to see how that has been uh, uh, adapted. <laughs> with newer games um and whether they've I been able to, to get around the how, how <laughs> aggressive that yeah. vibration is on it you um, never hear about it no so, so yeah it's, it's, these these new consoles are weird i, I don't know if it's because they launched in the pandemic and they're hard to get a hold of for a certain time but they seem like competently made things but just like yeah they're just a vehicle to playing games. Yeah. There's nothing revolutionary about them. And yeah, you know, diminishing returns with technology now in terms of games and stuff like that. So it's to be expected, but yeah. It's just like, yeah, I get to play the new shiny games. It's yeah. Just, it yeah. just seems like a forgettable generation, though. Oh, well, and I yeah. think it's, it's that jump between the generations, right? You know, between... Mm-hmm. Between PS One and PS Two was huge. Between PS Two and PS Three mm-hmm. also seemed huge. I mean, you know, the, the, sorry, not necessarily those mm-hmm. consoles themselves, but that generation was was, yeah. was big jumps. Yeah. And again, from from sixteen into thirty two and thirty two bit into then the Playstations and the Saturns and stuff. And I think when we got to the three sixty PS Three kind of era, that next mm-hmm. jump into PS Four was like more things on screen there's more particles yeah. we can do more yeah. stuff it's it's gddr5 yeah. now rather than just ddr3 memory and all of these kinds of things again great more stuff can kind of happen the processes are better and, and all of this sort of stuff there's yeah. more working memory to be able to, to to do all of this it's more like a pc so it's easier for everyone to make big games very and you much, can buy very them much. on anything but i think then again that jump between the last generation and this generation is similar Sure, load times are much quicker. It is slightly shinier. Ray tracing exists, and it makes things, mm-hmm. you know, the, the 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 shadow and the color difference is better. Mm-hmm. But that it, that's only like a mild step in one kind of yeah. area. You know, the visuals have got better. It is slightly faster. It's yeah. not getting up in the morning and feeding my cat and doing all of my washing up. It hasn't got to, you know, we're not, we're not, we're not <laughs> that kind of jump into the next generation where, you know, PS1 or, or that generation into PS2, suddenly like, the polygons are gone. What, what are, what's they're all polygons. of these things? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are polygons, but there's just so many more of them. Yeah. That it's just I, 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 changed how this looks completely. It's like I, I mean, so ray tracing is a thing that I think is really neat, and it's a yeah. thing that I used to complain about games. But the problem is, they got so good at faking lighting with non-ray tracing yes, that yeah. the only mm-hmm. times you notice mm-hmm. it is w- reflections, basically, because mm. like the shadows, you can fake a certain amount 
with an, like overlaying a bit and it's fine and we've maybe it's just that i'm old enough i got used to shadows not working right so just don't notice them but i'm i mean i just live in a world with mirrors and so when i walk past a mirror and there isn't a reflection i'm like oh i've become a vampire and it's like <laughs> that's what it means to play a video game and that's cool but the problem is the jump forward can't just be oh my god i'm no longer non-reflecting in a game mm. And so until, yeah. until, and basically I think one of the things that's happened is the um, the artistry around lighting, like as a photographer, I care about these things. I've just never thought about them in games, has been how to fake making it look generic because generic is impossible because we don't have the physics available. And now mm -hmm. we have the physics available. And so the leap forward is we didn't have to pay a bunch of people a bunch of money to fake this thing, <laughs> instead we can just make it. But mm. you have to buy a new machine so that yeah. we can not fake it. And it's like, well, give your the way you sell ray tracing is you have atmospheric games of lighting and stuff. So I guarantee you, if something like Alien Isolation, sure. a game of that caliber, like really embraced what it meant to have actual volume to the lights, right? Mm -hmm. To actually have the rays traced, and so the shadow of the thing walking past the the um, locker as you're like seeking, lit, looking through, all that kind of stuff, borrow from film, borrow from whatever. That would be cool. The mm. problem is all those set pieces are basically happened probably just with baked in fakery. Yes. Like, but yeah. you would need to have something of that level to convince the average consumer that ray tracing is a thing until we realize that like it also just opens up a whole other category of things if only to free up resources yeah, right the, but also just how it can kind of extrapolate into sound and 3d sound and all of those exactly, kinds of things right as well. and it's it's, yeah. it, it's just the problem is the big win is 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 something that we've been kind of fooled to thinking we had already yeah and unless you know about how sure. video games are made you don't think that the lighting is fake yeah right yeah. all the lighting yeah. angles are pre-calculated and they're baked in what does yeah. that mean I don't know. What it means is it looks like the lighting works. And now you're like, mm. oh, now I didn't. It's happening real time like light does. And you're like, uh, yeah, but it's yeah. happening. You, and as you and say, like, happening. you know, light box and placements and stuff like that. Like, yeah, developers got real good at that. So, like, even in, like, basic indie games, it's like, yeah, mm. uh, these shadows look real. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I've heard good things about Alan Wake 2. I might yes. For Christmas. But I don't feel like anything, any games. Did you play Wake 1? Yeah, much later after the fact. No. Apparently you don't have to. Good. Did you play Control DLC Alan Wake? No, I played Control Basic, and I played Quantum Break. Oh, yeah, Quantum Break? Quantum Break doesn't Quantum Break is a better game than everyone gives credit for. I fucking loved Quantum Break. I, I think really it's like, like I don't think Control is a much better game than Quantum Break. Ooh. No, they're. I they're think the na yeah, like the gameplay in Quantum Break is very good. The narrative in Control is better. Oh, yeah. Given that, the, 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 yeah, I see. What you're in fact, yeah. the 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 things they were attempting to do in Quantum Break and mostly succeeded at, I think, in some senses, harder to do and more successful than Control. Yeah. Control, um, they figured out that the narrative will sell it, and if they pulled back on their aspirations, it would be fine. Yeah, but it sounds Which like a lot of very well Alan Wake. very excellent game, right? But, like, Quantum Break swung for the fences multiple ways, and the narrative didn't work. No. But the gameplay, I mean, actually, I did have a couple really? random bugs, but of course it's me, so I definitely lent into them and then <laughs> fucked my game game up. <laughs> but, like, that's me. The initial bug, I, I will say, is on them, but the, like, hey, if you just kept doing this, what would happen is on me. <laughs> really break the game yeah because uh, it sounds like a lot of what alan wake 2 is i haven't paid too much attention because i don't really want spoilers but yeah. themes very much birthed from you know quantum break like that mm. interactive kind of movie almost but um yeah having but, like but baked into the game right rather yeah. than Go yeah, away and watch a 30 having minute to fucking download. TV program. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the the <laughs> sheer size of those episodes, and then and also just like they were like pseudo TV episodes. Yeah. So they were like twenty just... to thirty minutes. And it's like I'm trying to play a video game. Yeah. It's not it's making me want Netflix. I like your plot. I like your world. I'm not saying that these twenty minutes aren't interesting. They're just 
I don't want to have to do this right now. Do you know what video game is? Yeah. It was the uh, non-stop uh, Microsoft product placement with all the, like, the Windows phones in all the cutscenes <laughs> and stuff like that. That's what did it for me. Um, I mean, that sounds like was, a real TV show. It took me out of the immersion. It's like, who has a Windows phone? <laughs> and no one's got a Windows phone. <laughs> well, what's going on in this yeah, fake universe? Like, immersion broken, you know, uh, Iceman going, you know, <laughs> stopping time, you know, leap of faith. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, that makes sense, real. sure. But someone using a Windows phone in an office? No. <laughs> Come on. This wouldn't happen. Oh, um, good, good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Quantum Break's a good game. Mm, um, mm. Really, I mean, I, really solid gameplay. Alan Wake 2. Right? Because it was a. Mm. It's an Xbox wasn't exclusive. That when yes. they had an agreement with Microsoft? Yeah, yeah. 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 I, th- I don't think they own the IP. I could be wrong, but I don't think. I think Microsoft owns Quantum Break's right. IP. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Um, Alan Wake 2 was going to be the, the, the game I kind of mentioned for ray tracing and that uh, I think mm-hmm. just from the trailers that I've seen it, does, yeah. it definitely looks like it. there is a step up absolutely with, mm-hmm. with that kind of stuff yeah, but, so that's what I mean about atmospheric like mm. embrace the lighting engine and then we'll and then we'll expect the little things and we'll start noticing them in the other games yes. but like there's no way you can't sell an NVIDIA graphics card that does ray tracing at 120 fps or whatever on call of duty shadows right like sure. that's just not yeah. like yeah. you need that that game that makes it make sense a movie right? mild horror game absolutely yeah. sold yes yeah. hey, so if, if there was the dust particles in call of duty are very good i'll have you know <laughs> it's generally impressive i'm, I'm being serious yeah. and we've and we've come full circle so let's finish <laughs> there this mm-hmm. week uh, we'll return to our beers uh, Ado I know you're still drinking your second beer uh, but did you have any sort of final thoughts on, on that one or on the first beer from the oh, it, was a, it was a collab wasn't it Funky Fluid and yeah. someone else yeah Funky Fluid and uh, Warsaw Festival Piva which I think is the I mean I just mean the Warsaw Festival beer so I think it's a collab between um, Funky Fluid and the beer festival sure. I imagine yep um it was it was good. Um, I liked it. I liked that piney um, backbone. Um, I would easily have more than one of them. I did think that um, it has that it had that character of it has that like that one person said aspartame, but I think it just had that drying bitter note that and, and given that it also finished a bit sweet, made you I could see why you'd think that. But that's the one complaint was I was drinking it on the pace of the beer, not the pace of my like preference. Like yeah. I wasn't. I drank it quite quickly because it was making me want it because of just that drying out bitterness, which I don't really like. Um, but every other part of the taste curve is interesting. I really want to know what the um, all Polish hops were. All Polish, only Polish hop varieties. But um, yeah, definitely tasty beer. Uh, I, I will look out for more funky fluid and also, I guess, go to the Warsaw Beer Festival, according to this. Um, <laughs> so you should. Arbor was actually... Hmm? So you should. Yeah. yeah, the Arbor was actually kind of disappointing. Um, it didn't really develop over time. I, I thought like the for a collab and it's a cherry amaretto stout. I was expecting a, like a, a thick taste profile, but it kind of felt like oh yeah, there's like a stout that we threw some almonds and some cherries in and then a bit of uh, chocolate. And the bit of chocolate, yeah. I realized I, I spoke the most about. And it's a tiny note on the finish that offset the rest of the flavor, which kind of just this cherry amaretto, sure, but kind of flat on both of those notes and throughout most of the curve. And it's the fact that the the, um, the chocolate played with the malts and helped offset that taste that made me more interested in that one taste. Mm. And you never want that, right? You don't want the, the hint of chocolate to be not only not celebrated because it's a hint of interesting chocolate, but because it's breaking the monotony of the main tastes which is kind of how it felt right right yeah yeah so yeah you see on the shelf you've been seeing on the shelves i would give it a miss yeah fair fair um lucy Mm -hmm. the american the big american beer yeah it's very good it's still very good still got a decent amount of it because once i've become acclimatized to that bitterness Mm very much has like a 
as I said, like a malty but like sweet, uh, almost well caramel, almost like the the color of it, like caramelly finish. It's like more sweet, and it's just long lasting. It's like yeah, minutes would go by, and it's still it's still like yeah, I still have this very nice flavor um, on my palate. So yeah, that's why it's lasted so long. It's it's just a really good beer, really good beer. Um, mm. There isn't enough rye beers. I'm sure is rye cheap. Rye's gotta be cheap. Not a clue. <laughs> I don't um, know. Who knows? It depends on where. It's certainly cheap mm-hmm. in in, in Canada, mm-hmm. but I don't actually think there's a lot of local sources for rye. I might be wrong. Mm. Is it cheap in Virginia? Eh, Virginia is yeah, big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Virginia, yeah. yeah it yeah. would be cheap in Virginia for sure. Yeah. So yeah, maybe maybe we need to export some Virginia rye, because um, yeah, this is very very nice. It's but it's it's not quite a throwback to you know rye beers that I've had in the past, just because it is a bit more fruit forward, but it still brings those notes. We as I said, like the very bready malty caramel taste to it, um, decent decent body as well so so yeah it's like the best of both worlds it's kind of like bridging that gap between you know ripe PAs, ipas that i've had in the past and also having that bit of fruitiness um that modern ipas give you so yeah i really enjoyed this it's a very good beer good good mm-hmm. um I, I I feel similarly about the polys. Um, it, it's a nice beer. I wouldn't say it's a mm-hmm. very very good beer, but mm-hmm. it's definitely hit the spot really well this evening. Um, Which a lot of polys just does. Uh, it's like yeah. I, I I pick up a polys when I'm like, okay, I want a beer and just like yeah, just to have a nice beer maybe with dinner or something like that. Absolutely. Not think about it. Just like you know, yeah, not have it expected to blow my mind just be a very nice thing on the palate so yeah very I love much Polly's and it, it, oh. it um it mellowed very slightly that that kind of that mm-hmm. flavor profile that that speed that quickness of that flavor profile did mellow quite quite quickly not mm. like not instantly but you know i was a good kind of i already drank that first glass and then poured the second half of the the tin in as it started to to, to mellow and that was great because it started to bring in a few more of those initial kind of uh, fruity flavors. So it's actually a little bit more maybe peachy. So maybe sort of a, a slightly sweeter kind of melon with a with a nice stone fruit in there as well. Then leading into that big kind of piney bitterness, which did lessen the more and more that I drank, but, but which was absolutely fine because it became much more of a rounded flavor for the beer. Know, having a bit of a journey through those kinds of that little bit of sweetness that, that that slight mellowing into a more stone fruit into a bit of a peachy kind of flavor and then that that pininess kind of kicking in and that bitterness mm. that's a much better than that instant sort of like here's a sweetness bam here's that bitter piney kind of flavor um so the, the beer got better as i drank it and i think it's definitely one that i would drink again you know, if if the flavour had stayed the same throughout as that initial taste, I wouldn't have picked this up again. But I could pour another one now because my palate is acclimatised. I'm going mm-hmm. to experience the whole beer as this mm. slightly evolved version of it, or or or, or the, the acclimatised kind of version of it, which is much better mm-hmm. than that initial kind of take. Um, I haven't had a Polly's beer for ages, so it's nice to have one which started off a little bit kind of maybe abrupt and maybe a little bit too kind of brash, but then mellowed mm. and has just gone. Yeah, this is this is why I drink. This is why I like and I pick a Polly's beer because they yeah. do just make good beer, and this is definitely one of them. Once I've got Absolutely. past that first initial kind of flavour, mm-hmm. um, good. So that's all of the beers that we have been drinking this evening. Uh, and it's the games that we've been playing over the last week. If you want to tell us about what you've been up to, you can get us at Tanked Up Cast on the socials. I'm at Nova underscore 47. Uh, Adel is. At the Omniarch. And Lucy is. Juicy Loose 9. And you can all go to outoflives.net to look at other articles 
look at reviews, look at our faces, look at the beers that we have in our video form over there as well, which just pulls to the YouTube page, which you can go to as well. Um, not to call you out too much, Lucy. Where's where's I don't know what's coming? Where's the Substack, mate? What's going on? <laughs> oh, no. I know. <laughs> oh, Call of Duty's Call just Duty. taking it over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is what happens. <laughs> uh, a recovering addict, and you give a little bag of cocaine, just a little hit, just a little, just a little sniff, mm. and then. Just when I thought I was out, <laughs> pulled me back in. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's because I, it's because I would like to write something for about Call of Duty, but mm. I, I might write something about Jusant after mm. I finish it. Nice. So, and I still need to get up uh, something for Chance of Sinar, which is half oh, written. Yes. So. Because, yeah, that's another game I enjoyed this week. And then I... Basically, all I want to finish by the end of the year is Jusant and Cocoon. I'm... Oh, have those you are manageable. Cocoon? No. Okay. Those are manageable, and I know that they'll rank for me. Yeah. Because mm. this has been a year where I've not played much. And games are terrible. Like everyone's like, is this the best year ever for games? It's like, did Inscription Wait, come out this year? year? No, so it's not. Huh? I don't know. These you know what the best thing about gamers. this year is, is that I play. I got a Steam Deck and I could play games from other years more easily. Yeah. That's the best. Yeah. yeah, it's all these Nintendo babies. They're like, Tears of the Kingdom is the best thing ever, and it's like it's boring, I, mate. I, it's boring. I, I was just like, nothing about that game jumped out at me. It's like, okay, I... I like... Did you start it and play it? I don't know if we ever... You ever no. talked about it? Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I, you talked about it. Right. I, didn't, I didn't forget I mean, about like, it. I mean, like, the premise of it and everything I've seen and the things, it's like, okay, so it's it's like adding a physics sim to Breath of Breath the Wild. Breath of the Wild, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's like, Neat. I've played this game before. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, whatever, mate. <laughs> whatever. Like... Yeah. And you know what? A, a bunch Banjo of people, did this if you have access to, to an engine, you can mm -hmm. add Gary's mod to all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. Go play that. Go play Gary's mod's fun. Left, left Still dead. fun, years yeah. later. Yeah. Go play um, some Team Fortress 2. Do that instead. Man. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Is that still running? Does, are there servers? Can I, think can I so. just challenge I'm you pretty to sure. a pool? I'm pretty sure. And by Probably that, I mean, on Xbox. You, you, you want to you <laughs> get owned by some non-noobs because only non-noobs play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. In I'm, not, I'm not going into that. So, no. Um, I I, I want to be the destroyer of all man. Mm, stick Call stick with Call of Duty, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Can you um, play a lot of um, TF2? No. Nah. Ah, okay. I was going to ask what your favorite class was. No idea. Mine was Spy. I played a few matches. And... Spy and Scout. Those were the ones. Same for Left 4 Dead. Didn't 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 click with me a lot. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm just a loser. I'm just a Call of Duty loser. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, interestingly, I've just got a uh, what well, earlier this evening got an email from Gog, giving me a discount code for uh, a bunch of Quake games, and I'm oh. like, oh mate. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if anyone is Big playing Marina's. Quake Quake Three Team Arena anymore, but yeah, uh, absolutely, that um, game's fucking solid. I, yeah. I have no idea how it would feel having had what twenty five years of gaming. I I, yeah. I I when when was it? It must have been the first. It must have been just Quake, not Quake Two, because mm. Quake Two recently came on Game Pass. When oh. they Bethesda remastered or mm -hmm. touched it up, um, the first quake i played some death match in that and it's like that's still fun yeah it's still yeah. stupid still fun so yeah i I'd, I'd say maybe try it on game pass if you have a game pass because mm. they're free on there yeah. see if those servers are populated which they might be so yeah yeah that's still probably fun. one of the better that's places so to to play it probably because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. um, you'd imagine there is a bit of a community behind it as a, as a yeah as a game just jumping around service. those levels yeah. it's like it's like it's like time never passed. Huh. Time never passed. <laughs> oh, apart from all the bags and the grey hairs. Um that's it <laughs> yeah. from us this week. Thank you everybody for joining us. Uh we have been tanked up and we will see you very soon. Bye. 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 www.outoflives.net